Hello children. Today we are going to discuss about acid, bases and salts part 2. Right? So in previous class we discussed that activity 7. First question. What is our first question here? Whether all compounds containing hydrogen are acids or not. So here in this in the lab activity whenever you are adding hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid to the beaker right it is conducting electricity and the bulb glowing right if you are adding alcohol and glucose solution bulb is not glowing from this what you are concluding right so if the if a compound con containing hydrogen ions then only it conducts electricity right that is our first question acids have ions the movement of these ions in solution help for flow of electric current through the solution right Acid solution in water conduct electricity or not? For this question also, you have to write the same lab activity. Right? A test to know whether the given acid is strong or weak. Right? Third, next lab activity. Uh, for this also, I am taking same graphite rod, beaker. And only uh, thing is changing. What I am taking is, I am taking uh, four test tubes. Okay, I am adding 100 ml of water to all the beakers, take consider it as beaker only, small beakers. I am adding 100 ml of water, right. What I am adding is 10 ml of HCl, right. Here what I am adding 20 ml HCl, same hydrochloric acid, quantity is changing. 30 ml, here 40 ml, right. Right. So, from, from these four, four beakers, which one is strongest acid? Nature of the four solutions is acidic only. But this will be strongest acid and the weakest acid is this one. Right. Right. What I am doing? I am pouring this solution into the beaker. Right. So, here we have to observe the intensity of the bulb. Next, empty the content beaker and add second beaker solution into this one and observe how much brightness is brightness is increased or not right obviously brightness of the bulb increases now empty the beaker and add 30 ml this solution right so to the beaker what will happen brightness of the bulb increases 40 ml means more brightness will come here right so from this what you are concluding brightness increasing means the given solution is strong one. If it is decreasing means little bit weak. So that is our simple lab activity for this question. A test to know whether the acid is strong or weak. Clear? Same solution I am taking. In same quantity of water I am adding 10 ml, 20 ml, 30 ml, 40 ml. To change the uh, so strongness of the solution so that's for that reason this is weak this is strong right so in this situation it gl bulb glows brighter when you compare with 10 ml hydrochloric acid added to water right next ph scale a scale for measure ph scale generally to test whether the given solution is stronger as strong acid or, or solution is basic in nature or acidic in nature we use this universal ph scale right so what is the definition of ph scale a scale for measuring hydrogen ion concentration in a solution is called ph scale so p stands for potence potence power of h plus ions right so if you go to your textbook page number 48 right page number 48 this is your ph scale universal ph scale right so whenever you insert this paper in any solution based on the color you can recognize the nature of how much strong or weak clear right next 
solutions and placement of them on ph scale right so see here right generally ph value sir lies between 0 to 14 ph values ph scale value lies between 0 to 14 right 0 to 7 are called acids 7 to 14 are called bases 7 if you are getting ph value as 7 that is neutral solution so example for this is uh, distilled water not general water distilled water is neutral solution which will not conduct electricity even though it is water it will not conduct electricity distilled water will not conduct electricity values between 0 to 7 are called acids 7 to 14 are called bases right so uh, this is important generally we will get uh, one more question from this page strong acid zero value right gastric fluid carbonated beverages your cool drinks vinegar we use this for cooking right orange juice beer coffee pure rain and uh, egg yolks all these are acidic in nature lemon juice and uh, freshly distilled water value is 7 milk nature of the milk is acidic nature of our blood is base very weak base it is very near to 7 no so it is called weak base okay values between 7 to 9 are called weak 6 to 5 very near to 7 right so 5 to 7 are called weak acids 7 to 9 are called weak bases okay right next milk of magnesia baking soda household ammonia these are all household like strongest base these are bases and acids clear next importance of ph in everyday life so very very important question are plants and animals ph sensitive yes and all animals and plants are ph sensitive so living organisms can survive only a narrow range of ph when ph of rain is less than 5.6 right it is called acid rain so will it will it, will it affect us yes so generally if this water mix with uh, some lake or pond what will happen acidity of the water will change right so it leads to if it it will affect on the aquatic life uh, generally fishes all these will affected by this ph they may not survive in that ph range they will die when acid rain flows to the rivers it lowers the ph of the river water the survival of aquatic life in such rivers becomes difficult is ph causes tooth decay yes right what will happen if you eat something so you'll not wash your mouth at that time what will happen bacteria grow, growth right bacteria starts growing in your mouth and start decaying that food after that whatever waste coming from that bacteria is acidic in nature that uh, uh, that reacts with enamel enamel is the strongest layer present on the teeth right so strongest part of our body is enamel only that is affected by this ph if it is below 5.5 whatever material coming from bacteria that is low if it is lower than 5.5 so start what will happen that enamel starts uh, somewhat thin okay so that is the reason it is uh, it leads to tooth decay okay next ph in our so to stop this we use toothpaste in the morning right so, so what is the nature of the toothpaste basic what acid is present in our mouth even though it is very less to neutralize it we are using toothpaste which is in basic in nature ph of our digestive system so we know that gastric juice present in our stomach is or our stomach produces hydrochloric acid very strong acid present in our stomach right so if you are eating something it releases too much of acid in that case what will happen so you feel irritated right 
so to get rid get rid of this pain people use antacids right to neutralize the acidic reaction we use antacids these antacids neutralize the excess acid in stomach magnesium hydroxide or milk of magnesia we remember this word milk of magnesia a mild base is often used for this purpose in the place of antacid tablet clear next ph of soil plants also grow in uh, proper ph range only if it is too acidic or too base it, they will not grow grow properly so ph also uh, proper ph is required for healthy growth of a plant so that is the importance of ph in everyday life next chemicals from common salt chemicals from common salt common salt is sodium chloride which we use for taste purpose right so from where we are getting common salt ocean water sea water right we know the how we are extracting sodium chloride from that water okay so see here what chemicals we are getting from common salt sodium hydroxide baking soda washing soda bleaching powder the, generally these are the chemicals we are getting from common salt to extract this uh, we are they are following simple process that is here they took uh, some big a beaker in this we are adding sodium chloride solution means sodium chloride is added to water and poured in this beaker these are this is connected to battery or battery and uh, so we now switch on the circuit what will happen it starts conducting only sodium chloride solution is added to this beaker okay right if it is connected this positive terminal every battery will have positive and negative terminal right so this positive terminal is connected to one graphite rod it is called as cathode negative terminal which is connected to graphite rod it is considered as anode okay right after some time after switching on your circuit what will happen so if you uh, you'll find some gas bubbles near this cathode and anode so what we are doing we are collect we want to collect these gases from the anode and cathode okay so whatever we are getting near the cathode is chlorine gas here what air bubbles are releasing that is because of chlorine gas here hydrogen gas re uh, found it anode okay generally uh, basic thing happens like this electrolysis process again okay right whatever left solution is sodium hydroxide in the beaker right chlorine gas released at cathode hydrogen gas is released at anode remaining solution left at is in the beaker is sodium hydroxide okay so where we use hydrogen gas fuels margarine ammonia for fertilizers chlorine is used for water treatment swimming pools pvc and the cfc's disinfectants and the sodium hydroxide degreasing metals soaps and detergents paper making artificial fibers by seeing this picture we cannot understand uh, actually what is happening here anode cathode all this related to this one okay this diagram is given as like this okay see for here right when you are mixing hydrogen and hydrochloric acid you will get hydrogen and chloride you will get here hydrochloric acid used for cleaning steel ammonium chloride medicines and cosmetics if you are adding chlorine gas to sodium hydroxide you will get bleach okay bleach is used for household bleaches bleaching fabric right next bleaching powder so from these three chemicals we will get compulsory one question in the exam point of view first one bleaching powder only they ask uses of bleaching powder and how they are preparing they will not ask bleaching powder chemical formula right uses of bleaching powder okay it is used for bleaching bleaching cotton and linen in the linen in the textile industry for bleaching wood pulp in paper industry and for bleaching washed clothes in laundry 
used as an oxidizing agent in many chemical industries right used for disinfecting drinking water to make it free of germs we know to kill bacteria or germs we are we, they will add bleaching powder to water right used as reagent in preparation of chloroform to prepare chloroform so it's used as a one of the chemical in the preparation of chloroform right next baking soda formula of baking soda is nahco3 nahco3 sodium hydrogen carbonate right sodium hydrogen carbonate sometimes they will ask they will not ask baking soda they will ask uh, what are the uses of sodium hydrogen carbonate you should remember this this formula also okay uses of sodium hydrogen carbonate means baking soda only baking powder mainly contains nahco3 and its other components are cah2po4 and starch so where they use baking of bread right so this results cake and bread to make the cake and bread smooth and spongy we use baking powder sodium hydroxide hydrogen carbonate is also an ingredient in antacids where we use this antacid suppose if you are some suffering from acidity problem they they take antacid to neutralize the acid reaction right being alkaline it neutralizes even it is antacid tablet means basic in nature it's a ba it is basic in nature so what will happen when base is added to acid it is called a neutralization reaction right and provides relief it is also used as soda acid in fire extinguishers it acts as mild antiseptic these are the uses of sodium hydrogen carbonate means baking soda right washing soda sodium carbonate formula na2co3 sodium carbonate with what 10 water molecules right so what are the uses of washing soda we know for cleaning purpose cleaning cloths right so it is used in glass soap paper industries it is used in the manufacture of sodium compounds such as borax it's one more chemical to prepare a preparation of borax they use this one sodium carbonate can be used as cleaning agent in cleaning agent for domestic purposes right it is used for removal of permanent hardness of water these are the four important uses of washing soda washing soda bleaching powder baking soda from these three questions compulsory you'll get one question in any format maybe two marks four marks or one mark part b question you'll get from this okay next one more lab activity simple lab activity add copper sulfate to this test tube okay right what i am doing i am adding copper sulfate to the test tube heat it using bunsen burner what will happen so it they are first in situation they are in dry even though if they are seeming dry after heating you will find bubbles on the glass of the test tube and it turns into white color after heating it turns into white color okay right before what is the original color of copper sulfate blue from blue color to it is turning to white and uh, what you are observing on the glass walls uh, walls of the test tube bubbles water bubbles here we are seeing here on the walls of the test tube right now what i am doing remove the bunsen burner add some water to this copper sulfate now what is the color of the copper sulfate R white right so what i am doing i am adding water drops to this copper dry copper sulfate right again it turns into blue color okay so that is our simple lab activity next a plaster of paris very important calcium sulfate right on heating careful heating of gypsum at 373 kelvin 
it loses water molecules partially become calcium sulfate hemihydrate this is called plaster of paris so we know the, most of the time we hear this word right plaster of paris generally some uh, i ganesh idols making of ganesh idols or uh, doctors also use the, dentist use this plaster of paris or when fracture to give support to fractured bones right there they use plaster of paris very important you should remember this one half water molecule so one more question hidden here is how plaster of paris will have half water molecules half water molecule so that is question is given how can you get a half water molecule this is your answer it is written in this form because two formula units of calcium sulfate share one molecule of water right so uses are given here uses of plaster of paris used for making toys materials for decoration and making surfaces smooth these are the advantages of plaster of paris uses of plaster of paris and one more question how can you get a half water molecules means two formula units of calcium sulfate share one water molecule right so that's what so it is written as plaster of paris formula is written as like this okay so with this lesson your lesson is completed